What's up, divas? What's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. Of course, it's Real Talk Wednesday. But let me tell y'all something before we even continue and get into this. I'm going to try to make this video not as long as normal um, because I do have some things that I need to take care of. Like a bitch new, do need to get to the store and get like 30 cupcakes, okay? So today is actually Tuesday, but by the time y'all watch this, of course you guys know it'll be Wednesday. Um, I always record a day before because why the hell would I get up really, really, really early and record on the actual day and edit? But anyway, so tomorrow, meaning today when y'all watch this, is my sidekick's 10th birthday. Yes, Mumsy's birthday is today. So I have to get... 30 cupcakes or actually Mumsy's birthday is tomorrow which cuz today is Tuesday but you guys get it I have to get 30 cupcakes because of course they do celebrate in school so everybody got to get a cupcake okay you know it's gonna be like the Oprah Winfrey type of thing you get a cupcake you get a cupcake I ain't getting no cupcake I'm not really big on like cupcakes and shit like that I don't really like a lot of sweets um give me like a meal like some meat some steak some chicken some baked mac and cheese, some mashed potatoes. I could go on and on and on. That's me. I'm not really like a huge chip eater. I mean, I do buy chips and shit, but them shits will sit around for a minute. But, you know, it's her 10th birthday, so of course I gotta get some cupcakes. I gotta hit up the Dollar Tree, um, because there was a couple things that I needed from the Dollar Tree. And also, um, yeah, that's about it. So I decided to do my makeup off camera and my hair off camera today. Let me tell y'all something. I really, really hate when all these fucking things call your phone and it be like some computerized shit. And I be just like really into what I'm the fuck doing. But anyway, so. And I will block anything that calls me. So, first of all, I haven't really got too much sleep lately for the past few days. I'm not really sure why. So, when I got up this morning, you know, it was 7 o'clock. Of course, I had to bring Mumsy to school. I normally stay up. I do not like to go back and go to sleep. Because while I go outside, you got the fresh air hitting you. You got the sunlight hitting you. And then take your ass back to sleep. Like, to me, that's just pure fuckery. It's just laziness. Like, I like to be up really, really early. But, oh, my God, my eyes were burning so bad after you know dropping her off that I had to come and lay down so I said to myself self just lay down for like an hour that's all you need is an hour just to relax and rest choose your real talk topics and just relax so I said I'm gonna just close my eyes for an hour because I'm really really tired and I really can't function if I don't get no sleep and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only motherfucker so why is it every time that I try to get some rest anytime I don't take naps um once when I do take a nap it's because I'm sick I'm like either really really sick or I'm just haven't slept in like days like days so Whenever I do try to get some rest, like off the record type of rest, like meaning like it ain't nighttime, it ain't bedtime. Why does every motherfucker want to text me, want to call my goddamn phone? Like, are you serious right now? You bitches ain't been calling me. You motherfuckers ain't been calling me. You ain't been texting me. Why the fuck do you choose it now? Like, I hate that. And so I finally fell asleep. This was way past the motherfucking hour that I decided to sleep until or to relax until I did not wake up until 10 51 a.m. I woke up and was like gasp for air and it seems like whenever I do take these little off the wall naps off the record naps why do I my dreams just be so fucking weird okay so this dream was of me in back in New York City, where my mom lives at, down the street, in Flushing, Queens. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where I'm from, Flushing, Queens. And I was at the Busy Bee Mall. Now, I don't even think the Busy Bee Mall is even there anymore. You know what I'm saying? It was like this little mall. It, had, it wasn't like a mall like you would think of, like, you know, a real mall mall. But you know what I'm saying? It was like a flea market type of mall, whatever. I'm there, and there's, like, like all type of events going on. People, all kind of vendors are there. Why is my motherfucking ex-husband there? And he's with some kind of vendor that sells watches, but he don't got no shirt on. 
or nothing and he's just like really buff and so my mom is there and she's selling stuff too and I just so happen to get off the plane and end up there at the Busy Bee Mall with this briefcase and so me and him me and my ex-husband we go walking down Main Street flushing and like Dr. J's is still there and like people is rioting and stealing I don't know what the fuck is going on in my mind I think it's because I've been watching this show called The Strain and it's a Fox show I do believe it is a Fox Fox Network show and I've been watching that like binge watching it on Hulu um and I don't know what the fuck is going on like I woke up and like I'm asking him about all kind of weird stuff like these man weaves and listen all I know is I woke up and I woke up it seemed like I woke up even more tired than I was when I went to sleep and it took me forever just to gather and get myself together I had to get up and go in the bathroom and, and splash water on my face like literally kept splashing it and then I'm like I had to get in the shower and I still was like so tired and like so out of it and let me tell you, I was like, you know what? I cannot get on camera and do my makeup and do my hair while doing a real talk because I'm so fucking tired right now. Like, I'm just going to do my makeup right now. And I, my whole intentions of doing my makeup today was to do two motherfucking wig videos that I don't even feel like doing now. Because if I really did feel like doing them, my motherfucking hair would not be in this bun. So... I just did my makeup for really no reason at all because I could care less about going outside to the grocery store and to Dollar Tree without any makeup on. Like, that is not even my concern. So, yeah. Okay, maybe me and Mumsy will do our Dollar Tree video today um, since, you know what I'm saying, I got makeup on. But... You ever wake up and you're just like even more tired? Like, I felt like such a bum at 10.51 a.m. I was so disappointed with myself. And here it is now, 1.22 in the afternoon, and I am just now doing this motherfucking video. Like, this is not cool of me, okay? And to, to start it off, I had to put my memory card in. And I had two of them. One was a 32 gigabytes and one was a 2 gigabytes. I did not realize that I took the wrong one, which was the 2 gigabytes. And... It was like card is full. So I formatted the card and deleted whatever the fuck was on this old ass memory card that I've had forever. Okay. And I'm like, why is my camera keep shutting off? Why does my camera keep shutting off? Then I was like, you dumb ass. You got the wrong card and you deleted what was ever on this card off. Um... And I do recall, I, I, I think, I don't really even fucking know, I'm hoping that whatever was on this card prior, that I deleted it off. Because I'm really thinking that I did already, but who even knows? There was probably pictures of my kids on here from like so long ago, and now I'm really, really like kind of like upset about that. But anyway, so... Yes. Other than that, my week has been just grand. I actually was able to relax on Sunday. I didn't even know what to do with myself. I had finished all my video recording. I had edited enough videos. I had made wigs. I was sitting there twiddling my fingers and I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself. So I decided to sit on the couch with a snack tray of Doritos um, and sour cream and um, guacamole and watch The Strain on Hulu. Now, let me tell y'all, I don't ever get to sit and relax and eat snacks. I'm always doing something, regardless. If I'm watching TV, I'm making a wig, okay, or I'm editing a video. I am never just sitting there watching TV. So this was kind of like new for me. I just feel like that's just being lazy and I could be doing other things, but I had nothing to do. And um, I had cooked dinner. My house was clean. My laundry was done. It was really nothing for me to do. Um, so the weird thing about it was, you know, I'm sitting in my other living room that I never really sit in. And this is the living room that I had just redid over. And I don't really sit in there much because the TV is a smart TV. I don't have cable anymore. You guys know that. I just have these Android boxes and I only have two Android boxes, one in my room and one in my other living room. My son, he has, um, a Google stick in his TV. So, you know, he watches whatever he wants to watch. And... The Android box, you can watch everything. Like, I watch all the newest movies, everything. It's like having cable plus 100 times better. 
So in my other living room, that TV is a smart TV. So the widgets on there are like whatever came on the TV. You can put new widgets on there. So there was Netflix and there was also Hulu on there. But for some reason, that widget was not fucking working, the Hulu widget. So I went and I bought me a, a Amazon Fire Stick from Target. Plugged it in. I've been watching all kind of, just all kind of shit. All right. And I just was like sitting there watching the show, The Strain. Let me tell y'all, when I find something that I like to watch, I will watch that shit and binge watch it. Then sit there and be like, now what am I supposed to watch? You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, what the fuck am I supposed to watch now? Anyway, I was just so like relaxed. I even tried to take a nap, but I couldn't take a nap because I just couldn't go to sleep. And I just sat there and I ate this snack tray of chips sour cream and, and guacamole and was just like amazed and then what was so crazy about it i got to do it all over again on monday but monday was a little bit even different um i, I got up early and I, I did a couple of videos and then i had the whole day to myself i had no wigs to make because i didn't have any wig caps so i was waiting for them to be delivered today and then i just discover all the fucking filters on snapchat now normally i don't do the snapchat thing and when i did do it i never do the fucking filters because i just don't like them let me tell you i must be a filter queen now because a bitch was filtering every motherfucking picture and snapchat and shit i was having a ball then i went back downstairs and i watched tv again i don't know i just felt so relaxed and so when it was time to go to sleep I couldn't go to sleep, so I had to take a nap today. So lazy. I just can't take the laziness. I just don't like being lazy, and I know everybody needs a moment to relax and shit in life, but oh my God, you can't sleep but so much. You'll sleep your whole motherfucking life away if you're taking naps all day, every day. Like, I don't know. I feel like if you want to sleep, do that shit when you're dead, because life is just way too short. So I try to just do as much as possible during the daytime because I really don't like to waste my time fucking sleeping all day. I just think that if you sleep it all motherfucking day, what the fuck? Like, you need to find a hobby or some shit. But anyway, other than that, we're going to get into this real talk. If y'all wondering why the real talk um, music was changed for my intro that is because you know i had one of my videos removed because i guess drake felt like the 10 seconds that i took out of his song was taking his fucking life it was draining the life out of him so youtube removed my mu uh, my video and that was not the only video so uh, there are quite a few videos where i had to delete the sound out of the intro that you will notice on youtube so now the music that i have in the intro is actually my son jerron's music um and that's even better i'm really super duper proud of my son jerron i'm just going to share this with you guys really quick um and i say this because he has come a really really long way he's actually got a um couple of record a couple of songs out like because he's a rapper i guess that's you know i sound so old school when i say this he's a rapper but he he do have he does have some music out it might not be for everyone you know what i'm saying and that's cool because i'm older and the the newer generation music is a lot different from when i was a kid so you know what i'm saying so to each his own basically but i you know i do support everything that he does and i'm so proud of him because he's been opening up for like a couple of rappers he got his own show he was performing it everybody in schenectady new york loves him um guys in case you're like schenectady new york that is upstate new york like you know where albany new york and stuff is at that is where i lived at before i moved to arizona you know what I mean? I did move from New York City to upstate New York. And so I lived there for 17 years. And so that is where he still lives at with my other grandson, Sweetums. And he is like really making a name for himself. So I'm so, so, so proud of him because he has his family, meaning his girlfriend that he's been with since they've been 15. They have a four-year-old together. He has a good job. He's got a few songs out. He's popping. He's got some videos. One of his videos is uploaded on my channel i'm like super duper proud of him and it's just amazing when you can see your kids just like evolve you know what i'm saying because he's went from being really really immature to this young man that has matured a lot and you know 
he does thank me all the time for the things that I have done for him and because it wasn't for me. You know how they tell, they say to you, but I'm just so proud of him. So I decided to use some of his song as my intro music. Um, now, not like not all of his music is suitable um, for everybody, but that's fine. It has been played on the radio station in New York. So I'm like a proud mama, you know what I'm saying? Proud mother. Um, yeah, and then I got my 15 year old who is in high school right now who is texting me talking about she hates her history class because they don't even work in it. She said all they've been sitting around doing is playing video, I mean, table games like a bunch of lab rats, and she wants to do her work already. Nay is so smart, like super duper smart. You know, um, I don't know. Each one of your kids are always different. You know, I have five kids, and each one of them is always, always different from the last. Um, we always want all our children to turn out to be geniuses and whatever. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the kids, you just gotta, no matter what you tell them, you gotta definitely just give them a chance and try to help them the best that you can. So yes, you guys, um, anyway, I don't know where I went with this because I'm watching this video on Facebook real quick that was sent to me. Like, okay, some of these motherfucking people are just a bunch of weirdos. But anyway, let's get on to this real talk. If you have a real talk episode that you would like to be aired on this channel make sure you go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers at uh, muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com please put in the subject line real talk so that way i know it's a real talk if you want the subjects in the emails names to be changed like your name is april but you don't want everybody to know so we're gonna change it to wanda then just let me know in the beginning of the email that the names have been changed okay because if you don't i'm going to assume that you didn't and i'm going to change them okay so yes you guys on that note let's get into this real talk if you guys are wondering about this little bun that i keep fucking with today you don't want to act right but yesterday when i did the video it was fine so the tutorial is up for this bun which is really really like a bun hack it's nothing but a synthetic ponytail girl make sure you check out the video i do have some other new videos up on my channel so yes you guys let's get into this huh huh Huh? What? Damn. Damn. So this is going to be the one that's really the longest one. Like when I say it's long, honey, it's probably going to take me like 10 minutes to read this. So if I don't give y'all no eye contact, just please be advised that I am reading this really, really long email. <clears throat> hey April, I first off, I want to say thank you for taking the time to read my situation out of your busy schedule. I have been watching your Real Talk videos for a long time and for the first time in my life, I need another advice. I need another person's advice from someone outside of my family. Within this letter, I keep names under wraps. So my name is Angela, she changed the name. I am 26 years old, a mother of a two-year-old son, and another baby girl on the way. My boyfriend and I have moved out of our family from the state of Indiana to Arizona as of this 2017. Before I moved to Arizona, I was a full-time student. I worked a full-time job as well as a part-time job. And while myself and partner worked, my mother, who is two years clean from crack cocaine, has been my son's primary babysitter. Backstory on my mother and I. My mother had been an, a an active addict all of my life. We had many of challenges when I grew up. My grandmother ended up being my primary caregiver and since I have grown up into the young woman I am today, I have learned to acknowledge my mother's drug abuse, educate myself on her addiction, educate her on bettering herself in order to be a part of my son's life when I had become um, and became a parent back in 2014. Now let's speed it up. In 2017, when I moved to Arizona, this year my boyfriend and I official agreement was that I would take three to four months at home in order to spend more time with my baby. 
Since he knew my workload affected me not being able to spend previous times with my baby boy since after he turned one. And within this time, I could have a break from just being busy. But within this break, I have become pregnant with our second child. Since March of 2017 of this month, I was going through the first trimester spells. I was so sick all the time. On top of everything else, I am a type 1 diabetic, so this pregnancy has been a lot more different than my first pregnancy. My boyfriend is the household provider, so I did give him a lot of slack on not being as helpful to me when it came to helping out with my typical wild two-year-old son. So in order to keep our house under control and for me to get more help since his family isn't active in really helping out here in Arizona, he asked for me to see if my mom can move out here to help me with my son while I'm pregnant. I asked, she said yes, and was in Arizona by April of 2017. Once once when my mom moved, my house finances had taken a turn and bills were piling up on my boyfriend, so much that I decided to get a job. Since it was a great scenario for me to work in order to help financially take care of my family. Throughout this pregnancy, my boyfriend almost had a breaking point where I was going to leave and pack up my children, my child and mother and myself and go back to Indiana. But once when reality came hitting me on the head, Death came from a close friend of mine, of, of mine here in Arizona. My finances was messed up all of the month of May, being of a fraud case that I had to claim with Chase Bank. I took the time to make things right between him and myself, meaning my boyfriend and I. And since June, we have gotten back on track with making our relationship and household right. But in the month of July being July to be exact, my boyfriend and I got into a spot of an argument over something so petty, which I will admit, but the pettiness was not the main focus. How he was speaking to me was my issue, and so I spoke up to him. With me doing so and being verbally aggressive to him, my mother jumps in and attacks me verbally. Now, when heated arguments happen, which, mind you, she took his side and our argument and and I argument to while another level. She took his and my argument to another level. I left the front of the house and went in my room and told everyone to get out. Now I know you're probably thinking here comes pregnancy hormones, but that's not it. As I closed my door to distance myself from him and my mother, she bodies herself through my bedroom door by swinging the door on me. I tell her to get out of my room and out of my face. She, she stays present by bullying me into a corner. Mind you, I'm pregnant. So like an animal of instinct or person being boxed in, you charge the person out of your personal space, which I did. My boyfriend heard the scuffle and came to protect me and my son because he has never seen my mother, not I, with this type of behavior. As I am telling him to tell her to get out, she continues yelling and screaming, threatening to take my son. And I am ballistic at this point. My boyfriend tries to calm me down. Then she now turns into rational by saying, you're pregnant. You need to calm down. As I look at my boyfriend, I tell him to get her out of my space. He does, and she walks out finally, but continues to verbally abuse me. That's that was first that was the first altercation that day we as adults talk shit over apologize and i expressed to her and him to be mindful of me being pregnant before they think it's best to be aggressive towards me because even though i am pregnant i am me and to and i will protect myself before they think i will ever hurt my unborn baby sorry this is so long but i just wanted to let you know everything Second altercation. As of yesterday, I was sent home a bit early because me being sick and blood sugar being high. I got food for my home and I went home. I ate and took a nap. I wake up, my baby is acting wild and crazy like usual, and he is continuously throws tantrums. Now, when this is usually happens, my boyfriend and I let my mother discipline and react to him as she sees fit because she babysits him for us. Even when sometimes we may think she's wrong, we never say anything to her. Backstory. 
Since my mom has been here in Arizona, she has been drinking nonstop every week. She is plus size. She eats junk food. She stays sitting in one part of the house. She stays on the computer 24-7. And her only way of discipline is to yell, 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 and then tell and decide to spank my son when she feels fit. But even though I do not like her laziness, she possesses while here, I still never say anything to drag her down. I just try to do things to keep my baby entertained on my days off and vice versa with his father. So yesterday, my son throws his tantrum and instead of yelling and hollering like usual, I set him in his room and close the door behind so that he can check himself before I have to get to the point of snapping off. As I walk away from the door, here comes her throwing the door open and darts running out. Oh, here comes here he comes throwing the door open and darts and runs out. I run after him and I tell him he is in timeout. No one wants to hear him scream and holler throughout the house. So he needs to be in his room. As I am taking him back, my mother jumps in my face, telling me I need to go back in my room and blah, blah, blah. At this point, I tell her to get out of my face. She has no right telling me how to discipline. She is out of her position and she needs to back up. Now she has to go tie to tie with me by stepping closer, body contact on, hands on me, so I flip. I push her out of my way and tell her to get the fuck out. Or I will call the cops on her. Because she is causing disturbance in my home. Then she proceeds to snatch my son up. I then try to take him away from her. He is yelling and screaming and crying and she is applying her big ass weight on my baby. So I start wailing on her, fist to body face, whatever I can to get her off my son. She barges past me and leaves my house with my son. At this point, I call my grandmother because I needed a sound mind. At this point of time, my boyfriend is out of town for work, and I am helpless and furious and still pregnant and ready to kill her. My grandmother then turns the situation to a grandmother protecting her grandbaby, which threw me off because I never was a physical threat to my child. I was disciplining him, taking him to his room, and out of disrespect, she intervened. So why am I wrong? At this point, April... I have pled my case to my cousin, my boyfriend, my dad, and so forth. They understand where I'm coming from, and they feel as though my mother is causing a threat to me and my pregnancy, which is why I'm at the point of buying her a ticket back to Indiana. I want to know what do you think I should do at this point. I do not think my mother has the right. She is a physical threat to me. That is twice in one month. She has tried me to the corner of my house by bullying me because she is physically bigger than I am and I'm pregnant. But I cannot have her here anymore as a threat to me and taking me out of my character in front of my son. This behavior used to be our past life, be our past life when I was growing up because she was never around. And when she was, she came around, she acted as though she owed she owned the world and that we owed her and she was my caregiver and when that was never even the case respect had to be earned but now my respect for her is gone but unlike her i would never leave my child like she has left me my grandmother told her from me she has she was an unfit parent but as in my mother and i situation she is here because I asked, and by my choice of asking her to come, she cannot even take care of herself financially. She is still an active addict or alcoholic at this point, and I have had it. That is broken. That is a broken relationship she and my grandmother had had all her life and has affected me, but I refuse to let it affect my children or come back to haunt me. I need help to ease my mind. I have taken the necessary steps to getting information from my coworker on getting my baby into daycare soon. I have to choose my baby's safety. She is a threat, and I really hope you respond to my long letter. <laughs> wow. So it was kind of long, um, but basically, Angela, who, we just going to break it down, 26 years old, has a two-year-old son who is, you know, you know that they, they say about two-year-olds, they bad, they just wow, they tantrums, they just, you know, this is a two-year-old. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old grandson here, and I will tell you what, he live up to every last thing. He have tantrums, he cry, you know, we have to discipline him. I keep him while my daughter's at work. Um vice versa you know what i'm saying but angela's situation is a little bit different so she moved here in arizona where i live at from indiana and mind you when she moved here it was just her her two-year-old son and her boyfriend which is the father of her child so she did take some time off from work 
um, when they first moved here. And come to find out, she ended up getting pregnant. And, you know, she's a type 1 diabetic, so she really can't do too much. She gets sick a lot. She did have, she does have a little job now. But she did ask her mom, who is an ex-crack addict, crack cocaine addict, to come and help her. Mom has been clean. So she flies her mom out here from Indiana, and her mom has been babysitting the little boy. And But I think the mom is kind of overstepping her boundaries, okay? And honestly, I really do feel like she's overstepping her boundaries. It's one thing when you have your parents come live with you, and that's great, especially if they can help you out. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for helping your kids out with their kids. You know what I'm saying? I do that for my, my daughter. And I wish that my other son was here because I would definitely help him out and watch my four-year-old grandson. But there comes a time when, you know what I'm saying, discipline is very strong will. Like, you do need to discipline your grandchildren. You do need to discipline your children. That's what we're here as grandparents. But you can't go into your kid's house and start friction and arguments and be jumping up in her face like that. Like, how is her mother even watching a little boy if she is constantly drinking all day long and sitting on a computer and eating junk food? You are not teaching that little boy anything if you're sitting up there drinking all day. So now she going to move from being a crack cocaine addict to now an alcoholic, okay? And y'all know I don't condone that alcoholic shit. Now, mind you, I do have a drink every day. Or not even every day, but you know what I'm saying? It's a drink. I ain't in here trying to get drunk and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not into all that. But I tell you what. I am not about to tell my daughter how to discipline her child. If... I mean, maybe I'm wrong for saying that because if I feel like she's doing something that's totally wrong and out of character that could harm him, then I'm definitely going to say something to her. And if I feel like she's not doing a job as a mother and he's wild child acting like a grizzly bear and tearing up my motherfucking house, then I'm definitely going to say something too because, hey, as a right, this is my home and I have every right to discipline him as well because we all family and we live together. However... I don't think it's fair to Angela to have her mother there who is just causing more flame and fire to the feud or feud to the fire, whatever you want to call it. She got her mother up in there acting like a hood rat and shit. You know what I'm saying? Boxing her into a motherfucking corner, bullying her, snatching her son the fuck off, running out the house, siding with her boyfriend. Y'all both attacking her verbally. And then now you bullying her and you boxing her into a corner. Let me tell you something, Angela. I would have been had her motherfucking ass flown back to Indiana. That's her problem. If she can't um, support herself financially, then I wonder why. All your life you have been taken care of your, by your grandmother. Your grandmother has been your sole caregiver. And why is that? Because your mother has been a crackhead, cocaine addict, and now she's an alcoholic. And you got her watching your son. It's one thing because you want to have a relationship with your mama and you want your mama to have a relationship with your son. But he is not in good hands. Definitely not in good spirits. If your mom is constantly drinking and she's watching him and she's starting shit in your home and she is upsetting your home, then that is not a good environment for your two-year-old. It's bad enough that two-year-olds are rambunctious and shit and they wild and they throwing tantrums. That's with any kid, not even at a two-year-old age. Shit, I see some of them that's like 10 and 12 that be throwing tantrums up in the store and a bitch be ready to knock them the fuck out. But I got to be like, oh, that's not my kid. April, just go ahead and mind your motherfucking business. But if you got somebody living in your house, it don't matter who it is, okay? It don't matter if it's your mama, your brother, your sister, your kids, your father, your uncles, your aunties, whatever. It don't matter. It's your home. And you should never allow somebody to come up in your home and uproar your home and uproot your home and fucking have your home turn it into a dysfunctional household. That's not what she's there for. If she is there for one purpose, which is to help you and to help you raise your son and to help you watch him and shit like that, but she is not doing that and she is causing more ruckus than need be, then honey, it's time for her to go. You have given her a chance. You have given her a place to stay. She don't even pay to live there. You know what I'm saying? Because I, she ain't got no finances. She ain't got no finances. So you are taking care of your mama and you are enabling and vetting a fucking alcoholic who is bullying you and causing an uproar in your home. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. 
This is my motherfucking home that I pay rent for and I pay all my fucking bills for. I'd be damned if any one of these motherfuckers that live up here, meaning my kid, is about to get me out of character and irritate and aggravate me. Because the first time your motherfucking monkey ass do, the door is right there, good motherfucking by. And if you don't want to leave and you have an issue and you want to stand here and argue with this bitch, me either I'm going to take your motherfucking head off or the proper authorities are going to be called and they are going to have you removed from this household. I am not about to put up with nobody's bullshit and ruckus up in my home. I don't give a fuck if you are dog, cat, mama, father, brother, sister, whoever the fuck you are, husband, whatever. If you're going to stir some uproar up in my household, honey, then you know what? It's going to be time for you to go. You see how I got rid of the last situation, the last ex-boyfriend. I had his ass removed out of the motherfucking state of Arizona, okay? Not just my household, but out of the state of Arizona. I'm not playing these games. Too old to be aggravated. And if you're pregnant, honey, when you're pregnant, you're supposed to be stress-free. You already got diabetes going on. You already got this little two-year-old who is driving you insane. And then you got this fucking mother of yours, your mama, who is drinking every day, okay? Eating up shit, sitting on the computer, doing nothing with her time, okay? When you watch a two-year-old, just because you keep your eyes on him don't mean you're watching him, okay? You need to teach him things. Teach the little boy to use the potty. Teach him how to be a productive little citizen. Even at the age of two years old, they sponges. They soak up every motherfucking thing. And why have that negativity around your two-year-old? Because that is just going to allow him to be disrespectful to you, disrespectful to your husband, and disrespectful to your baby on the way, okay? I be damned. You already got enough shit going on. I'm not about to have some older ass woman who knows the fuck better to fucking disrupt my household. Now listen, you asked her to come out here. True indeed you did. And you probably helped her out more than you even can imagine. So this is what you need to let her know. Mama, as much as I love you, this is not working out for us. You know, I did bring you here to help me with my household, but it seems like it's more problems than enough. You know what I mean? I understand one argument or two, maybe even a disagreement, but we about to, we throwing blows up in here and this is my home. This is where my family lives. This is where I raise my children. We're not about to be throwing blows in my household. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to buy you a ticket back to Indiana and I hope that you could get it together because I cannot have this negativity around my kid. I do want you and my son and your other grandchild to have a relationship. But the way that things are going right now, you have moved on from one drug to another drug because alcohol is a drug too. Okay. Whether y'all want to think so or not, that shit is an addictive drug just as well. You have, I have seen many people's families in relationships and marriages get mixed up behind alcohol. Trust me, I'm sitting right here and I'm telling you, as personal as, you know, as hands on, because my ex-husband was an alcoholic and he, his drinking messed up my, my, my marriage. Okay. Why the fuck you think I'm here in Arizona? Because his drinking messed up my marriage. If he wasn't a drunk and if he wasn't alcoholic back then, we would have had a whole different type of relationship and I wouldn't be sitting here without him. But you know what? It is what it is. And I'm moving past that somewhat, okay? But it's a whole different type of drug. And I'll be damned if I'm going to allow somebody who is an alcoholic be up in my house, fucking disrupting my home. That shit don't get no better. They get worse and worse and worse. And now you got your mama bullying you up in your motherfucking face, talking shit to you in your house, and she don't pay shit? Girl, bye, okay? For real. I love my mother to death too. And thank God she never had none of these problems. My mother never drank. She never smoked. So she never had any of these problems. So I didn't have to deal with none of that shit. As well as my father, same scenario. I mean, my father smoked weed, but he ain't no, you know what I'm saying? He ain't no drug addict. Now, mind you, my sister's father, who my mom and me went to live with when I was 10 to 14 years old in Brooklyn, he would drink, but he was a happy drunk. But sometimes he would get a little mouthy, and we had to, like, put his little ass in his little troll ass in his place, because, you know, he liked the size of George Jefferson and shit. But... That shit still was annoying. Like, don't nobody want to be around somebody who is an alcoholic or a drug addict. That shit, shit is a fucking annoyance, okay? Especially if you ain't one. That shit, that shit messed up people's homes and, and lives and all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I'd be damned if I'm going to be sitting around putting up with anybody's bullshit. Especially if you up in my motherfucking home. Now, if you feel bad that you done flew her all the way out here from Indiana 
She agreed to it. You didn't put a gun to her head and say, listen, you about to come out here and watch my fucking son. You and her agreed to this. And I'm pretty sure you, she agreed to you that she would help you out. But she's not helping you out. Okay? She is giving you more work than you can imagine. And on top of that, you saying that the bills are piling up. The bills are probably piling up because your mother is there all day. She on the computer all day. She using up your motherfucking electricity. She's using up your water. Bitch, I live out here in Arizona. I know exactly what the fuck is like, okay? That shit is not cheap. Certain shit is not cheap. And with somebody staying in the house all day and eating up snacks and watching TV and cable and... That shit piles the fuck up, okay? It builds the fuck up. So, my advice to you, I know you probably fed up by now. I don't even know when your baby is due. I would surely be interested in it because a bitch will come visit you at the hospital, okay? And congratulate you. And you can always email me, Angela, and let me know when your baby is due. But, honey, we all have a parent. We all have a mother. We all have family members. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one out there who got a family member that's a crackhead, an alcoholic, or some type of scumbag, okay? But I tell you what, when it's your home, don't allow people to come up in your surroundings, in your habitat, okay? In your safe zone and aggravate you. Let me tell y'all something. As much as I love my motherfucking kids to death, they get on my last nerves, too. And sometimes they aggravate me, okay? And then I start flipping the fuck out because, I listen, let me tell y'all something. If I pay 90% of the motherfucking bills up in this bitch, you ain't about to aggravate me. Now it's 100% because both of them need to find a better job. I am not about to be aggravated. I am not about to wash nobody's motherfucking dishes. I am not about to pick up after nobody's fucking child. I am not about to do the shit that I don't have to fucking do, especially if I pay for electric, gas, water, rent, car insurance, cell phone bills, okay, and internet. Let's not forget the groceries and households thing, so that's eight, okay? If I got to pay for all of this shit on my motherfucking own, and if I forgot something, bitches, please let me know, okay? Because I, I think I counted every last motherfucking bill. If I have to do all of these eight things on my motherfucking own, I am not about to do nothing else up in this motherfucker, okay? And when I say nothing else, meaning dishes, picking up, taking out the motherfucking garbage okay there are some things that i do not want other people doing like i don't want you doing my motherfucking laundry because y'all i just don't i don't want you polishing my motherfucking furniture because i don't know what the fuck you're gonna use on it you might fuck it up okay um and i don't want y'all mopping my fucking kitchen floor because i like to do it my certain way so there are some things that i i would prefer to do on my own but i'm not about to have anybody up in my house irritating my soul and sometimes you know what as an older person you know what i'm saying i have had my share of five children so i have raised my kids my last two are still young 15 and 10 I'm not responsible for nobody else, okay? I got a 25-year-old. My son will be 25 August 23rd. That's in New York. I got a 21-year-old, and I got a 19-year-old. Them three, I'm not responsible for y'all. Y'all need to do it y'all own self and get it the fuck together, okay? I'm not saying that they don't have it together. Some of them might not have it together the way that I would want them to. But the only two that I'm responsible for now is Nay and Mumsy, 15 and 10 years old. So if I was to pack up right now, today, and say, you know what, fuck Arizona. I'm moving back to Schenectady, New York to be with my son and his son. Then I can do that. And the only two that I have to be responsible for is the two that I am mentioning, okay? Let me just tell you that much. I am not about to be breaking my back and being aggravated. So like I was saying, as a mother of five children, okay, and two grandsons, I'm not about to be aggravated by nobody. Now, like I said, my grandson, he is two and a half years old. He lived here with me, okay? He sleep in the room with his mother, okay? Let me just tell you that. 
He gets on my nerves too. Yes, the fuck he does. He does. He gets on my nerves just as much as everybody else because he's two and he does things that I just can't fuck with. Okay. Like I can't take the crying all the time. I can't take the tantrums. I can't take a lot of that shit. So I, I take myself out of the zone and I come right up in here in my own little world, my room, okay? Because I dare a motherfucker to come up here and fucking aggravate me up in my space because this is my personal space. You come up in here in my motherfucking space and aggravate me, it's going to be a whole different world. I welcome that shit, okay? But sometimes I have to put my fucking foot down too and let them know, listen, you better pick up after his motherfucking ass. You better tell him something or I'm going to do it myself, okay? And I dare a motherfucker to say anything to me. However, I'm not about to be disrespectful. I'm not about to attack nobody neither, all right? That's what I'm not going to do. And the first time that I feel threatened or overly aggravated up in my motherfucking house, it's going to be a problem. Don't invite people into your home and then allow them to aggravate you, okay? Don't feel bad about telling their asses, bye, Felicia, bye, Fernando, okay? Deuces. Don't never feel like you should not have a voice, okay? This is where you reside at. This is where you live. This is where you pay your motherfucking bills for. If these motherfuckers are living in your home and they not contributing, then the door is right there. Don't let the door hit you with the good Lord split you. Bottom line. So send her on her way packing because your home ain't going to get no better with nobody like that around. And that's just my bottom line. You can tell her you love her and she, you hope she get it together, et cetera, et cetera. But I'd be damned if I'm going to have anybody up in my household fucking with me. Okay, so the next one. Hey, April, my name is Sarah. The name has been changed. I'm 26 years old and I live in New York City with my boyfriend of almost seven years. Lately, I have been having the baby bug and yet a huge part of me is terrified to actually have a baby. We both have good jobs and my mother lives very close to me and we will be more and she will be more than willing to help out. I get so worried about thinking about the type of mother I would be or if I would even love my baby. I know it sounds crazy, but I think, what if I hate my baby? Also, I am so afraid of gaining weight and looking like complete shit. I'm not on some top model status, but I like my body and I don't want it to change too much. Maybe I'm too self-centered in thinking along those lines. But then again, do we as women really need to give up on ourselves entirely in order to have a baby? I would love your input, input on what I should do and what you think is a good age or time for motherhood. I'm not into going out and I'm very much a homebody. So a big part of me feels like I am ready for the commitment. By the way, I really enjoy watching you at home, work, and washing dishes or washing my ass. Anytime, at any place, you're right there making me laugh and putting a smile on my face. Okay, this part she told me not to read, so. Okay. Please take care and always know that you rock and I have such a positive effect and have such a positive effect on people's lives. Thank you so much, Sarah. Okay, so the part that I, I read quietly, she told me, please don't read this on camera. So I couldn't read that part on camera. But it's nothing really. She just wants me to know what she looks like and stuff like that. So Sarah is 26 years old and lives in the NYC. Isn't that so cool? Like from where I'm from. So she has a boyfriend of seven years. And she is getting like the baby bug. You know how some of y'all bitches don't have kids. And y'all be like, oh my God, I want to have a baby. Listen, let me tell y'all something. But she don't know if she really wants to have a baby because, like she said, she doesn't know how, it, she doesn't know if the baby, if she would love the baby. She doesn't want her body to change. So she just is a little bit confused, okay? And let me tell you, first of all, it's very expensive to live in New York City. Why the fuck you think I don't live there no more? But whatever, she's making it work, and that's good for me. What's good for her is good for me. If she like it, girl, I love it. And she got her mother in the same area. Last story, we had somebody whose mother was thrown flown, and she was just totally off the point, off the wall. Okay, so, Sarah, here's my point. Now, listen. 
I have five kids, so I can't really tell you what life would be like without them. I would probably be really a miserable person, you know what I'm saying? Or unhappy and lonely because I, listen, I don't got no friends as it is. And you telling me you're a homebody and you don't like to go out. So do you have friends or are you just relying on your boyfriend and your mother's comfort of being there? Let me tell you this, and I'm going to give you the pros and the cons of having children. Okay. The pros are to me. You always have someone that's going to love you unconditionally. That's just how I feel. Like I always say, I always feel more comfortable around my children. And I know that they won't judge me like that. And regardless of what, they're always going to love me because they're my children. Now you have some of these little hateful ass children who ain't going to love you, especially because if you ain't bought them shit. But you know what? They like that because of the way they were raised by their own parents. So as long as you are nurturing and you are a mother and a respectable mother and you teach your children right from wrong, then you should never feel like you are going to hate them now are you going to hate your baby some women go through post post postpartum i've never had that luxury of going through postpartum and i say that luxury because some women go through it and they don't want to do anything they don't want to take care of their children i've never had that luxury and to me it's really not a luxury that's just me being sarcastic so I really couldn't tell you what that's like to hate your child, but the day that I've had every last one of my children, um, I just was in tears and I just loved them the moment that they came out. So I have all of this love around me and I've never even seen myself having children, to be honest. As a, as, as a young woman, as, as an early teenager, I always said, I don't want to have children. I don't want children because I had to help raise my little sister. So that was enough for me right then and there. I didn't want none of my own because I just felt like I just wouldn't get along with them. I, and I seen how other people's kids were. They were bad and they were just fucking little, little, little wild animals. And I always said I didn't want to have children. So I ended up having my first one and I was like, that's it. Listen, five kids later, I will tell you this. They are the best things that ever happened to me. They are a blessing in disguise. And like I say, I have five of them. And each one of them have a different personality than the last one. And that's fine. I don't expect any of them to be the same. But yes, as a mother, as an early young age mother at 18, I did struggle. I struggled a lot with my kids, but I would never change any of it to this day. You know what I'm saying? Because as kids and as having them, they helped me grow into the person that I am today. You know what I'm saying? Like they have motivated me to do better. They have motivated me to just be a better person in general. And they have taught me a lot in life. And the things that I do are for them. It's even to this day, even though three of them are grown, I still do everything that I do to this day for every last one of my kids and my grandchildren now. So that's motivation. And I have never seen myself as wanting to have grandchildren. Like, come on now, I'm 43 years old and I got two grandkids. The first one that I had, I didn't really feel old. Like, okay, that's just one. Okay. Then I had two that I'm like, damn, I'm a grandmother. But you know something? I feel blessed and I feel so much love. Like I feel the love. Like, honestly, I feel all the love. When I come in this door, my house door, from being outside, or I wake up in the morning and I go out the room, I got my grandson that's there, and it seemed like he loved me more than anything in this world. My mom, my mom, he always so happy to see me. And then we have our little feuds, you know what I'm saying? He sometimes get on my nerves. I'm pretty sure that I get on his too. But we have these moments with each other that just, I, I look at it and it's like, well, you know what? If I didn't have Tati or Jerron, I wouldn't have all this love for my grandchildren. So I see the love there and I feel the love. You know what I'm saying? And as a parent, it ain't never going to be easy. You know what I'm saying? There's no book of how to be a good parent. There's no handbook of how to be a good parent. There's no online course of how to be a good parent. You have to learn that shit as you go along. You know what I'm saying? And Granted, when we have kids, but my first, when I had my first kid, I was 102 fucking pounds, all right? Never would you believe that I was ever that motherfucking skinny, okay? But I was 102 pounds. I gained enough weight, 54 motherfucking pounds to be exact, after I had my son. I went to 102 to, was I even that much? Maybe not uh, 50 pounds, but I gained like 20 something pounds, 30 pounds. So I, I gained a lot of weight, but you know, I, I gained weight. It's to be expected. You having a baby, you are carrying another life. Okay. And that's 
a beautiful thing as it is. But that's what we got gyms for, okay? That's what we have diet plans for. That's what we got eating healthy. You don't got to be big. You don't got to get humongous from getting pregnant, okay? Some people do, some people don't. Let me tell you something. I see pregnant women all the time out here in Arizona, and I find them to be the most beautiful creatures on this earth. Pregnant women are so beautiful to me. They might find that they're not beautiful at their own selves, but I find them to be beautiful because they have this little life that is growing inside of them and your body is protecting this child and your body is nurturing this child. And it's just amazing to see babies being born. Like I had the opportunities to see both of my grandchildren come out. When it, and you know, it's not the same when you're watching on TV. But it's totally just like miraculous to see it in person. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I will tell you this. It's work. Having kids is work. Come on now. I got a 25-year-old in New York. I still help him out. I still do things for him because these are my kids. And I'm going to help them out for as long as I can. But y'all motherfuckers got to do that shit on your own too. Don't always lean on me. Okay? But... When you have children, you always got somebody there unconditionally. You know what I'm saying? You always going to have somebody on your side. I don't have too many friends, but the friends that I do have, they live in this house with me. And I got my sidekicks who are always with me out in public. And whenever you see me, you always see one of my kids with me. So I find like having children are a blessing and it's just a beautiful thing. Now, the... The cons of it might be this. You might go broke. You might lose um, a little bit of your sanity as well. You know what I'm saying? You might gain a little weight, okay? Um, you might go through a lot of shit in life when you have kids. Those are the only cons that I can tell you. And that's just a part of life in general, even if you don't have fucking kids, okay? But here's the thing. If you're 26 years old now, I'm not saying go for it, and I'm not saying don't go for it. You got to feel what's right for yourself, okay? If you're not ready for it, then you're not ready for it. Some keep, some people are just not meant to have children. That's, that's just what it is. It is what it is. Some people are just not meant to have kids, okay? They have they'll have cats and dogs or whatever. That's fine. Those are their kids. Those are their children. And then there's some people like myself who are meant to have kids and have a whole lot of them. But here's the thing. I cannot tell you what's right for you. I can only give you my personal feelings of what is right for me and what I have been through. And I'm pretty sure that I am not the only one out there that feels this way about children. Like, true indeed, I go through some shit. I never will say, oh, I wish I never had kids, okay? Um, I have been broke many a times. I have struggled many a times in life. Many, many, many a times. But you know something? Hey, I'm thankful for it because right there with me through the struggles and shit was my children. Okay, um, they have struggled with me and my struggle was for them. So if you feel like you're getting the baby bug, that's cool. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other women out there that also get it. You know what I mean? And want to have a child. You got to sit and you have to think about your life. Don't, don't feel like you're self-centered because you, you worried about your body shape. It's a body. You can always snap that shit back into shape. If you really want your body to get back into shape, then you will get there, okay? It's all about motivation. You have a baby, you don't gain weight, you don't have a baby, take your baby for walks in New York City. There's so many things to do in New York City. I remember growing up with, as a kid, my mom would take me to the Museum of Natural History. We would go into Manhattan. We would go to South Street Seaport. We would go to the Bronx Zoo. There are so many things and memories that I have growing up as a kid in New York City and spending so much time with my mother because I was the only child for 12 years. And I treasure every, every moment of it, okay? And my mom she was happy to have me as her sidekick. So I can't tell you whether to have a baby or not, but I could just tell you, you got to think about it. And there's so many different reasons to have them. And then there's so many different reasons to not have them for you as an individual. Okay. I can't speak for you, but what I can tell you is this, that don't worry about the little things like, um, your body, because you might like your body as it is now, but honey, it ain't gonna stay like that forever. Okay. It's a body. It's a body. We as people always need someone. We need someone. Nobody wants to grow old alone, but I'm, I cannot tell you to have children 
I can't tell you to have kids. But if you feel like you are ready, things will happen on its own when it's the right time for you, when you are ready. So just grow as a person. Maybe there are things that you need to figure out on your own as a person to get out of that self-centered stage, like you said, and just grow as a person. That's the most that I can tell you, okay? I wasn't prepared to have a baby, my first one, but I grew up, and that's just what I did. So, yeah, give Sarah your word of advice. What would you do if, you know what I'm saying, you would um want to have a kid or whatever? Or uh, what would you tell her as an advice? So now we're going to move on to the next real talk. <sighs> so let's get to it. Hey, April, I have been a subscriber for a long time now, and I'm writing to you to ask for advice. I have been in a six-year relationship with a man. Let's call him Jay. We have lived together for many years, and he has been the main source of our income in our retirement of our entire relationship i work but only enough to pay a few bills jay broke my heart a few years back by cheating on me with a female i used to call my friend i found out it i found it in my heart to forgive him and we worked through it coming out stronger in the end or so my dumb ass thought recently i came into enough money for a small trip and i was going to take us on a vacation all Jay had to do was put down $800 for our plane tickets, and I was going to handle everything else. Well, come to find out, his motherfucking ass has a secret drug problem and spent all of that $800 on drugs. When I called him on it, Jay turned on me and made it about everything I'm doing is wrong. Since that day, I had decided I was going to save money so I could have eventually leave his ass. As I said before, Jay makes all of the money and has always done so. I think it was a, I think it was a way for him to try to control me and it worked. My plan to save money was going fine until a couple of days ago. Jay pulled me aside and explained to me that he felt our relationship was over and I needed to move out soon. He owns the house we live in. I don't have anywhere near enough money to make it on my own as of right now. I would be lucky to get some shack of a window for real. My mom doesn't have room for me, so that's not an option either. So my question is, should I try to keep this relationship going in hopes that soon I'll be able to have enough money to leave and be comfortable? Or should I just keep my pride and leave Jay, but then have to struggle being alone? Thanks in advance, boo. Damn. That's kind of fucked up. So for real, this is we're gonna call her um Price. Price really is in some shit. So she been in a relationship with this nigga named Jay for six years, and she lived with him in his house. So mainly he is the sole source of income. You know what I'm saying? He is the one that makes the most money. He has been the one that has been providing and probably paying most of the bills and shit. She came into some money and wanted to do something nice for him, take them on a vacation, which is nice. You know what I'm saying? All he needed to do was put 800 down on the fucking tr on a plane ticket but before we even get into that did this nigga cheat on her with one of her good friends and she forgave him they got back together etc etc when it was time to put the 800 dollars down she found out he got a, a drug problem so she called him on it let me tell you something they ain't going a trip okay that's fine they ain't going a motherfucking trip but did this motherfucker tell her he needs she needs to get out She's been saving money because she's been trying to save money to get her own place. But this nigga told her to get the fuck out. So she wondering, should she try to make, like, try to make the relationship work so that way she can save enough money to move out on her own or just move out and struggle? She can't go stay with her family members like her mom because there's no room for her there. But let me tell you something, Price. Let me tell you this much. First of all, it was one motherfucking thing to cheat on you with a close friend and you forgave him. Now, men cheat, women cheat. That shit happens. It's a part of life. But I'll be damned if you're about to cheat on me with somebody that's close to me. I'm definitely not going to forgive you. That I'm not going to. That bitch probably going to get her ass whipped and you going to get your ass whooped too. Because if that's your close friend, then she knew about you and Chase. I mean, you and Jay. Excuse me. But... 
Therefore, it takes two to tangle. I might just have to walk away from the both of y'all motherfuckers and leave y'all both the fuck alone. But y'all been in a six-year relationship. You done just found out he had a secret drug problem. You trying to take this nigga on a vacation, which was nice of you, okay? You know what I'm saying? All you asked him to do is put $800 down, and this nigga done fucking smoked it up because he got some secret drug problem. I don't know what the drug is, but we just going to call him a crackhead because it don't matter what your drug of choice is. It seems like you could be a heroin addict, a, a meth addict. We still call you mother fuck is crack heads okay it is what it is okay so if this motherfucker told me to get out of his house i'm leaving i'm not about to sit around in nobody's fucking house and try to make some shit work with them knowing damn well they don't want me there because he's just going to take that to his advantage and he's going to treat you like a piece of shit as long as you allow him to because you staying in his house let me tell you something the struggle is real and that's wherever the fuck is okay i have been kicked out of better places that's what the fuck i would tell his ass now your mama told you she didn't have no room for you i'm pretty sure that she's not going to allow you to be on the street however sweetheart there are shows Shelters, regardless of what town, city, state your ass live in, there are shelters for battered women because that's what your ass need to let the motherfuckers know. You are a battered woman and you left a situation and you ain't got nowhere to go. They will help you get on your feet. You ain't got to stay somewhere where you're not wanted and put up with shit and be degraded and belittle for some nigga, okay, because you ain't got nowhere else to go. I'm pretty sure your mother is not going to allow you to sleep in the strip streets, regardless if she ain't got nowhere to stay. Everybody got a floor. Everybody got a couch, okay? And I'm pretty sure that you can make space for me in your bathtub or your motherfucking closet so that I don't have to stay on the street. I'm not a listen. Listen, I have been kicked out from places as well. Not homeless, but me and my mom, like I said, we moved to Brooklyn when I was 10 and we lived with my sister's father until we was 14. We lived in his house. The motherfucker kicked us the fuck out, all right? He put us out. We went back to my grandfather's house in the projects in Flushing, Queens, okay? The bland projects where I grew up at, okay? However... I have been kicked out of better places. I'd rather be homeless or live in a shelter than be living with somebody who gonna treat me like shit and degrade me and use me and belittle me. Than stay, and then, you know what I'm saying? I would rather be homeless than stay with somebody like that. There is no way that I'm about to stay somewhere where I'm not wanted. Honey, let me tell you something. The money that you do have saved, take your money and your shit and get the fuck out. Because this is a blessing in disguise. Whether you know it or not, it's a blessing in disguise. Six years is a long time, but it ain't a long enough time to be sitting around and be little and be treated like you ain't shit. So you got this motherfucker treating you like shit, cheating on you, controlling you because he making some money. Honey, let me tell you something. It's all about respect. You got to have self-respect, okay, and pride. Take your shit and your, your pride and move on, okay? Like I said, there are shelters out there that can help you get on your feet, and I'm pretty sure your mother... Who the fuck is calling me? Hold on. Guys. Okay, so that was my 15-year-old because we're going to meet up with each other. Listen, I can't even remember what word for word I said, but... There comes a time in our lives when we as women got to grow up. Never let a man or anybody control you because they make a little bit more money than you or they have a little bit more than you do and then they dangle that shit over your head. That shit is not motherfucking cool. Let me tell y'all something. That ex-boyfriend that I put out last year, over a year ago, year and a half ago that I sent back to New York, he bought me the computer, the Mac desktop, and the Canon T6i that I'm recording with or T5i that I'm recording with okay he would say little things like oh aren't you happy daddy bought you that look, look you got you got better quality now because daddy bought you that I had to turn to him one day it was like you ain't my father he live in Pennsylvania or he would say things like if we've gotten to an altercation well I want my computer back or I want my my camera back okay Take the shit back because you know what? I got two laptops downstairs and I got that same motherfucking camera that I've been recording on downstairs that I can surely hook the fuck back up and reuse the shit. Or better yet, like I said to him, you can take your shit because I can go out and buy three of them motherfuckers, three computers and three cameras today with not a problem, okay? Never let anybody dangle anything that they have 
over your head because they will use that shit to their advantage. So he got a place for you to stay and he been paying for shit all this motherfucking time or he make a little bit more money. Let me tell you something. Your self-respect and pride is worth more than the shit that he got in his bank account or the shit that he got in his motherfucking household, okay? And like I said, your mother may not have room for you, okay? And I like same scenario here. My son and his girlfriend and they son, they came all the way from New York to live out here. I didn't have room for them. All of my rooms were occupied. But you know what? My other son, he gave up his bedroom for them and slept on the couch. There's room. Like I said, if you got a floor or a couch or a bathtub or a closet, we make room. If we are family, we make room for one another. Okay. And if they cannot make room for you and your family or friends cannot make room for you or have nowhere for you to stay at, sweetheart, that is what you call a shelter. Sometimes we got to push our pride aside and not even pride, but sometimes we got to show people, you know something you ain't want to help me or you want to put me out and I'm going to show you better than that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go about my business. I may not got much. I may not have more than you, but I do have more than you because I got respect for myself. Okay. I got self-esteem. Okay. I got pride. Okay. And I know I'm some motherfucking body. Okay. Bitch. I know I'm some motherfucking body. So you could take your little house and your bank account and you can shove that shit with the sun. Don't shine all right because i'm gonna walk my ass out here with whatever the bags that i came in with and a little bit of money that i got in my pocket i'm gonna make it sometimes we need to see reality so that we can progress in life just like with that asshole that i had to put out I had some coins in my account, but as soon as I got rid of his ass, I had got more. I progressed, basically. I got, I progressed in life, and I got better. Some of y'all might not think that I got better, but bitch, I will tell y'all motherfuckers this in a heartbeat. This bitch got much better, okay? I don't put up with nobody's shit. I would not fucking put up with nobody's shit. So if you think you want to dangle something over my head that you done gave me, nigga, you could take your shit the fuck back. I'd rather not have. Then me having you sit around and dangling some shit over my head. So, sweetheart Price, no. Don't stay there and put up with his bullshit, belittling you and doing what the fuck you want to do just to have somewhere to stay. Honey, that'd be harder than being homeless, okay? I'd rather be motherfucking homeless. Dead ass. So now I know you guys, I'm going to go. I'm about to go get my daughter. We're going to go get some cupcakes for Mumsy's birthday. We're going to go to the Dollar Tree and all of that goody, good, good stuff. And yes, you guys, I love you. I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. Leave your comments and opinions below. And yeah, make sure you guys um, leave my Mumsy a happy birthday, Mumsy, down below. Hashtag happy birthday, Mumsy. Cause that's my girl, my little sidekick. And I'm pretty sure you guys know who she is because she does her the Dollar Tree videos with me. But yeah, so it's going to be her birthday by the time this goes up. And she's 10. So she's got a phone. And, I, you know, I, I bought her a phone like a week and a half before her birthday. And all she does is, I'll be like, could you put the phone down? Hello, can me some attention? That's my sidekick right there. So I'm about to go get her. We're going to go pick out some cupcakes, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to go downstairs and tell my grandson hello and all that goody good stuff. So I hope you guys have a great, fabulous day. Make sure you check out my other videos for this bun tutorial. It's super easy and all that good shit. I do have a new vlog up on my channel. And the name of my vlogs are Keeping Up With The Fam, not Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Because, bitch, if I was the Kardashians, oh, my God. I probably would be super duper stressed the fuck out. Um, so money isn't everything. But yes, I have a new video up, Keeping Up With The Fam, a vlog. Um, it's 40 minutes. So I try to keep them long. Um, and um, I give you a semi house tour because I did do my living room over. So for all y'all nosy motherfuckers that wanted me to give a house tour, I gave a semi one. I will give you more of a house tour once my kids clean up their fucking rooms. But yes, you guys, I love you. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you watch it. Make sure you thumbs this video up because you love me. I know, you know what I noticed before I even go, I, I do have some little hating ass people I, i'm not even gonna say bitches because men are hateful too that like to thumbs my video down i you know what it used to really really bother me a lot i would go and i wouldn't even want to look at my video once it was posted because it was thumbs down and shit i knew it was gonna be one now i don't even give a fuck all right y'all motherfuckers want to thumbs it down then fuck it well don't do that because i said to but i'm just saying it is what it is, but y'all still watching me, and I love you all for watching me. So I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious, and I'll see y'all in a soon-to-come video.